Okay, this is the recording for part A of the blood lab. The formed elements of blood are the cellular components of blood. They um, include, oops, the erythrocytes, the leukocytes, and the platelets. So, erythrocytes are red blood corpuscles. And in the box on your lab, you have a place to draw these. And so in your box, it's all of these little pink things that look, some of them of which look like they're hollow. Okay, so in addition to erythrocytes, now you do have a picture with platelets, although we don't have a place for you to draw them because most of our slides don't show them. Okay, so then you have leukocytes, neutrophils, monocytes, lymphocytes, basophils, and eosinophils. Here you have a monocyte, a lymphocyte, and two neutrophils. We will go through the attributes and you can put the little notations next to your boxes so that you know what they're gonna look like. And then we'll take a look at um, some pictures from actual slides, although these are gonna be better here. Okay. Neutrophils have multiple lobed nuclei. So this may look like different pieces, but it's all one piece. This and this is all one piece. There's a teeny tiny link. So they look like sausage links in there for their nucleus. And so yes, even though you can't see them, they're going to have different lobes to their nucleus. They're the most numerous. They're the easiest to find on the slides. The monocytes are the biggest. They have a notch in their nucleus. Sometimes the notch is deep, like we see here, and sometimes it's fairly narrow or shallow, like we see here. If you compare the sites, the size of the erythrocytes next to them to the size of the monocyte, you can usually fit four to five of them in the same amount of space. So that's what I mean by big. Lymphocytes are the second most numerous of the leukocytes and they have a very large round nucleus and very little cytoplasm. Down here, you can see that small amount of cytoplasm. And that's how you tell the difference between a monocyte and a lymphocyte because lymphocytes can range in size. So even though this one looks like it has a slight notch in the nucleus, it can't be a monocyte because it doesn't have very much cytoplasm. So the easiest ones to find when you get a slide of blood 
are the neutrophils and the monocytes. The hardest ones to find are the basophils and the eosinophils. Basophils look like they're completely filled in. If you could look closely, this would be the nucleus. And they have dark, large granulations in the cytoplasm. When you compare them in size to the erythrocytes, you can only get two maybe three at the most. So they're gonna be really tiny and they're gonna look like they're all filled in. Eosinophils are a bilobed nucleus. You have one lobe here, one lobe here. If you look close, you can see there's a connecting piece. They have darker cytoplasm than the neutrophils. And sometimes the lobes can be right next to each other. Inside the same cell or even, oops. I have no idea why this is messed up. Right on top of each other. So you have to look closely and you look at the cytoplasm. So you have a place to draw them. Over here, you can see photographs of actual slides. You can see an eosinophil. You can see a basophil, a lymphocyte, an eosinophil a monocyte, a neutrophil, you have oops, a basophil here, you have lymphocyte, you have a neutrophil next to a lymphocyte, you have another monocyte, and then this was a monocyte that had the shape of a heart for its in a neutrophil. So you need to fill those in, make your drawings. Um, the next thing that you're gonna do is to answer some questions about the normal values. You go back to that table at the beginning of chapter 18 to get those normal values, or you can simply look in your notes, your lecture notes, because you should have them there. And then you're gonna have to look in your text for the diseases or disorders that are associated with too high of a blood uh, erythrocyte count, too low of an erythrocyte count. Um, same thing with too many leukocytes or not enough leukocytes. Again, you need one range of numbers. And don't forget the units of measure, because when you write out your units of measure, um, the numbers don't mean anything if you don't have the units of measure. So in uh, leukocyte and erythrocyte platelet levels, it's um, the um, number, so millions per microliter. It's a mu or a, it's a, it's a Greek letter, mu, so microliter. It's also on the back of your, or the second part of that small periodic table, if you wanna see the thing. So 
with leukocytes, erythrocytes, and platelets. It's so many per microliter. If you don't have the per microliter, it's partially wrong. Okay, so that's the end of part A for the blood lab. Again, you have to do section three and answer all of those questions in addition to drawing your uh, leukocytes and erythrocytes.